ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening, everyone. My name is David Morgan. I'm Arlington's Environmental Planner and Conservation Agent. The June 6, 2024 public meeting of the Arlington Conservation Commission will be conducted in a remote format consistent with Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, mm -hmm. which will have remote participation in public meetings until March 31st, 2025. Please note that the meeting is being recorded and the recording will be, may be made public available, publicly available. All mater materials for this meeting are available at the link that I'm putting at, uh, into the chat right now. Mm -hmm. Please note that the Zoom chat feature may be used for questions and comments that contribute to the commission's procedures, and if it's used otherwise, it may be disabled at the chair's discretion. A public comment period will follow each hearing. The Conservation Commission encourages attendees to make questions and offer comments during the public comment period. Chuck Thurman is our commission chair and help facilitate tonight's meeting. Each vote taken during this meeting will be conducted via roll call vote, and we begin with roll call attendance. Talk to you for that and agenda review and so on. Sure. Um, Mike Gildiscan? Present. Nathaniel Stevens? Present. Sorry, I'm having internet trouble, so I have my video off, but I'm here. David White? Here. David Kaplan? Present. And I don't see Brian McBride, but if he's here. Okay, and Chuck Taroni's here. Associate member Sarah Alfaro Franco. Uh, present. And Eileen Coleman. Here. Great. Let's just review the agenda real quickly. Um, administrative, we'll review the minutes of uh, May 16th, then we'll go into correspondence, then we'll have an administrator's report. Written enforcement for 34 uh, Dudley Street. We'll hear from the Water Bodies Working Group, CPA update, and a quick update on Park and Rec. Our first hearing will be a Thorndike Place. The second hearing will be uh, 18 Hamilton, and the last meeting tonight would be the Medford Boat Club. And with that, administrative review of the May 16th Minutes. David, are those available? Yes, here we go. And uh, Nathaniel and Susan both reviewed in advance of the meeting. We had some minor edits. Uh, Jennifer, was it Jennifer who did these or was it Susan? I think it might have been Susan. Either way, great job. And very few edits. So I think Susan thing. did these minutes. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, one thing to note on the Indian Coolidge uh, amendment is that we're going to list the reference material, and that would include the documents provided for the prior hearings. And so having just issued that amendment, I have the document names and we can add those to the minutes before we post for anything else suggestion. There's a clarification here. Do we know where the isometer was supposed to be installed at 88 Village? That should be too pretty easy to figure out, but uh, I don't have that information. I think it's in maybe one of Mary's submittals, which I don't have with me, but I can, David, I can try to find it later. I, I mean, you know, it's if it's part of the meeting materials, I don't know. It's essential for us to dig it up for the minutes, but 
Certainly for the order. Yeah. Then... Mm. We're not sure about the time when David White rejoined the meeting, or Susan was not when she wrote these. David, do you know off the top of your head what you're doing when you came back to, or what time you came back to the meeting on the 16th? Not your muted side. Okay, sorry, muted. It's briefly after the. Um... Third like place finished up. Yeah. Well, we'll have to compare timestamps. That time is probably not critical, just the fact that he returned to the meeting after you could say he even returned to the meeting after that hearing. Okay. Yeah. After okay. after Thorndike. Correcting the name of the consultant there quickly, and that is, I believe that's it. Yeah. Yes. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes as edited and discussed. A second. Second. Oh. Mike killed this game. David White. Yes. David Kaplan. Yes. Mike killed this game. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. All right. And correspondence uh, is available to the public and for a full list of uh, Correspondex contact our conservation agent. We'll be providing a link to the correspondence in that uh, one note is that the Arlington Land Trust report are available in the correspondence page. We're gonna move on to administrator, uh, administrative report and I'm gonna go right to David Morgan with that. Sure, the one thing that I have to share is that there are repairs needed to the boardwalk at Arlington Great Meadows, and David White's been working on that. So, David, could you fill us in on details, please? June 15th and 16th. Great, and Boy Scouts will be working on the repairs. Arlington Scout Troop 313. And that's just, it's minor work, right? We're just replacing planks and... Replacing bad planks in the... Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. ADL together. Oh, wow. A lot. That's what I've got for administrative at this point. Okay. So we're going to move on to uh, number two on our agenda discussions. And the first thing on our agenda is uh, 34 Dudley Street. And uh, this is a proposed storage facility at 34 Dudley Street. At our last meeting, May 16th, the commission asked for plans that reflect our tree replacement policy. The applicant agreed to submit an updated set of plans. Um, on June 3rd, 2024, we received that uh, set of plans dated May 29th, 2024, which includes the requested 16 new trees and the revised plan. VHP are here, and uh, can you introduce yourself and your team and bring the Conservation Commission up to date with your project? Hi, certainly. Uh, good evening, everyone. Eric Gerard, I'm the project manager for this project from VHP. Um, I'm here representing PSI um, Premier Storage tonight. Um, unfortunately, Jesse Morgan um, could not make it. Um, and yes, uh, my colleague Dan Ketches was able to uh, represent for us at the last hearing. Uh, we coordinated with him. He, he relayed all the information. Uh, we had our landscape architects uh, look at the plan, uh, find a home for those additional 16 requested trees, um, and we we also infilled with a, a few extra shrubs as well. Um, so I can certainly share my screen and, and walk through it with you if you'd like to show the, the new additions. Please. All right. David, can I share my screen? Oh, here it is. Can you see that okay? Yes. All right. Um, so the 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 view up here is um, the plan that was submitted in, uh, just showing the revi the revisions to our, our current, uh, the approved planting plan. Um, so I, 
primarily adding the trees along uh, the edge within the riverfront, um, kind of on that the, the bank area, and, and as well as infilling where we can adjacent to the building and adding one more in the front. I'm going to switch to a color plan just so it's a little bit easier to see the the new plantings um, with the steen trees and 19 shrubs, and it includes um, two additional deciduates, um, four evergreens, and then all um, a bunch of new flowering trees, and then the shrubs. So happy to answer any questions. Um, we were able to, to find a home. These trees along the riverbank, um, we're requesting that we can, you know, at the time of install, just make sure we, we, we get them right when we put them in. So having someone on site with the contractor to, to physically place each one um, in these general locations, just to make sure there's no um, issues with uh, root balls or anything like that as they install them. All right, any questions from commission members? Will these trees be covered under our uh, three-year um, policy for uh, die-off, just as we did with the other trees that were on the, uh, the order of conditions? My understanding is they are. OK. That was my only question. This is a uh, enforcement order for the commission. David White has. Uh, David Morgan has his hand up. Yeah, I was looking at the um, the plant schedule and the eight uh, horn beams to go in, and just noticing that the so the Latin name is for a varietal of the American, like the Native American horn beam, but then the common name given is the pyramidal European horn beam. I'm just wondering about that discrepancy. Like, am I just misunderstanding that the variety has got a different name for some reason? And you know, do you know anything about what that varietal is in that case? I am not positive on the specifics of the the actual plants themselves, as far as the the different naming. I can certainly request if there's a. Um, a request I can confirm with my landscape architect. Um, I would say, since we're looking for native stuff, I don't know how. It might be so. Um, I need the permissioners to remind me about the um, requirements for the native plantings here, and then the. Um, so do you mean for the survivability? Is that what you're is that it? No, I'm trying to read the plan quickly to see if the um, conditions include that the planting plan be native. Eric, do you remember the top of your head? Yeah, I mean at the at the onset, I know we had looked at providing all those trees that I think were, were were in accordance with a with a list um, that was previously co coordinated. So these were in the original plan as well. Um, so we had just added one of each um, for these original deciduous trees. Gotcha. I mean, most everything here meets those qualifications. I think maybe. There, I mean, that, that postal shrub, of which there are 16, and I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> um, that one does not seem to be from around here, but I also know that it's from farther south, and our climate will be quickly changing to be more like that. So I don't feel like that's a problem. I guess the only clarification I would want is about the um the horn beam and whether that's a varietal that's combined with some European 
species or something. I can confirm it and just doing a quick look, you know, there is an American horn bean as well. So um, I can I can request um, if it if it makes sense to swap that out with with an American species. Yeah, I, I think just that's probably the easiest way to go about it is just make that a straight species of the American horn bean and we're good. All right, Nathaniel Stevens. Thanks, Chuck. Uh, just wondering what the enforcement order says, and should we, because we do have an active enforcement order on this, right? Which Absolutely. I suspect is, is to submit a restoration or submit a uh, submit a plan. Just want to see because I'd make a motion to amend the enforcement order to adopt this plan with the proviso that that hornbeam tree be corrected if needed. How about all new plantings should uh, um, need to be uh, native to the Northeast? Sure, sounds good. And and will be subject to our three-year survival standard. Yeah, so the last time I heard it, it was 100% trees, 80% shrubs. That's, David, if that's what you remember on the last order you wrote. Yeah, that's in section 24, right? Yep. That's consistent. So that's my motion. Is second. All second. David Kaplan second. Seconds. Uh David White. Yes. Mike Gildas game. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. And Take everyone, like, yep. And Chuck Taroni says yes. So we uh, have updated the enforcement order. We've accepted the revised planting plan and uh, with the uh, conditions that we stated tonight. And you are all set. Um, so you should run this planting along with the other plantings that you're doing for this project. Uh, so I don't know if there's any other comments from the applicant or the commission members, but if not, we're all good here and we're going to get on to our next, our next hearing. Great. So I guess, David, so what, should we provide you with a letter stating, you know, the confirming all the, you know, natives? Yeah, please. Um, She's on that. Is that how you... Yeah, um, that was okay. great. And then revise the plan accordingly. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Eric. Have a good night. All right. So we're moving on to more discussion. So the Water Bodies Working Group. David White, do you have anything to update the commission on tonight? Well, Supply Pond was true like what? Um, May 22nd. That's here has been effective for moving all the clear leaf pond weed, uh, water, no foil. Without creating the algae bloom. So looks like it went well. Also note that when Brad lowered the water level, some alewives came into spy pond. So there's migration going, also migration going on. Hmm. Alewives. Um and the let's see, reservoir has been delayed for a week, but uh, to the seventeenth, I think. How much else news? David, anything? David Morgan, anything to add? No, um, there's nothing to report since our last meeting at Hills Ponds. There is volunteer activity coming up at the res, being worked on for scheduling purposes with Mystic River Watershed Association and volunteers. So that'll happen starting June, July. Yeah, water chestnut harvesting, yeah, manually, you know, like canoes, yes. Yeah. That's scheduled. Yeah, nothing, scheduled. nothing else comes to mind. 
All right. So we'll uh, move on. If that's it, we'll move on from that report to uh, CPA update. And that's David Morgan again. Right. So this is uh, usually Brian McBride's liaison report. I can fill you in on two things that he's updated on in the past. One is the funding for the Hills Hill mountain bike project that was advanced and approved. So that project will be moving forward. The other is the Mount Gilboa project of ours. And um, there is some concern um, from some of the members of the CPA committee who are also residents of the Crescent Hill neighborhood about the uh, fact that the sale of the property was included in the feasibility study, which, you know, by its nature needs to consider all facets of uh, proposals raised in the course of doing the study. And so they, uh, their objections to that proposal. Um, we will hear from Martha Lyon for a presentation, final presentation on that project at the meeting of this commission on the 20th. And so um, we'll have more information on the whole project, uh, really ending up the project at that date, but um, I just offer the CPA committee updates um, for perspective and context. That's all I got on CPA. All right. Last thing would be the Park and Recreation Committee. A question, a question about the... Um, oh, David, go ahead. Board. When is the report available, David? Do you don't have a deadline for a report? I read the draft report today. Martha's going out of town until the 17th. I think she's gone in the next 10 or 11 days. I'm not sure if she left today or she's leaving tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, but she will get me revisions in advance of the new thing on the 20th, and we'll be able to share those. If you'd like, I can share the unrevised draft around with commissioners. But um, I like to see I like to see the current draft. Yes, sure. Um, which is that won't be the draft that goes to the public. It's just sort of a working draft. Yes. Okay. Happy to share it. Okay. Does anyone else want to look at that draft on the commission? <laughs> yeah, Mike Gill, this game. So, so, David, when you get the draft, why don't you just circulate it? I'm sure Susan would have said yes also um, to all the commission members. Okay. So it says yes. All right. So, the next on our list is uh, Park and Recreation Commission. And the only update is the, the next meeting is on um, June 11th, and I will be attending that meeting and making a report at the next meeting, the next conservation meeting. Okay, so we're going to move on to our first hearing. Our first hearing is Thorndike Place. This is a continuation of the May 16th hearing. At the May 16th hearing, the commission updated the information on their search. Uh, and they found, they said that they had not received any uh, responses at that time, and a motion was made to continue until this meeting. The Conservation Commission scope included Massachusetts um, PE for peer review and to review standards two and three, and then also to review comments by Scott Horsley on behalf of the abutters. The Conservation Commission received two replies since that meeting, one from CZA and one from Hatch. Along with the Hatch proposal, the commission received a review uh, by Hatch of standards two and three uh, in the correspondence with the first, uh, yeah, this correspondence was first unsolicited and it was incomplete because it didn't include the Scott Horsley information for review. Also, it does not um, help the commission to have this information because we would need 
that consultant at a meeting to answer questions. So with that being said, David Morgan, you have- um, I'm excusing myself again. Oh, sure. Sorry, David. David White's recusing himself of this meeting. He's going to sign off right now. So David Morgan, with that being said, uh, can you update the commission on these two applications? And then if the commission could just start in on asking questions, I, I, that would be uh, the way I would want to continue from here. Sorry, let me just pull up the proposals. Is is anyone else having trouble hearing David Morgan? Or is it just me? It sounds a little muffled, but I can hear oh, him. Okay. A little bit. Yeah. I would I don't know if you can be closer or clearer. But... Closer to the mic. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. I have a new setup here and it has been less good at picking up my voice. So here. Let's start with the revised proposal from Hatch. Um, sorry, my computer's hanging now, of course. Oh, it wants to go with the GZA proposal instead, so I'm going to lead with that. There we go. GZA uh, proposes that the scope of work uh, reviewing for stone water standards number two and three, mounting analysis in particular, um, is a two week time period estimated at $6,000. Well, let me see. Revised. Next slide. This is the original. Sorry, that didn't open the right one. No wonder it's confused. David, I had a quick question about the, the GZA scope. There was some mention of reviewing numbers by um, Scott Horsley and some information there. Um, and I'm not sure I saw that reflected in the um, in the scope of their proposal. Correct me if I'm wrong. Their proposal or our proposal? Uh, GZAs. It's in the first paragraph right at the bottom, just above where it says background. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I was looking at the, uh, yep, thank you. I also interpreted uh, step number one, review available files to include that as well. Mm-hmm. You know, Thank I, you. I was mistaken in the end. So, Nathaniel, when you negotiated with Hatch on, well, you didn't really negotiate, you corresponded with Hatch about their review. The project estimate came back at the same level or lower than? It, it did come back at the same level. They said that that was the, okay. uh, the cost. Yeah, like, I highlighted that as a comment and they and they didn't adjust it. So okay. I don't think that's I don't think that's an error on their part. In which case I apologize for the delay. I had the right file open all along. We're looking at uh, an estimated cost of 850 for the um, total scope of work, and they estimated below that it would be a four-week period 
to execute the scope of work. And then we already have received the review, so that is a new point. Um, all other aspects of this, I believe, are consistent with the scope of work that we put out and uh, otherwise matches the GZO proposal. So stop that. I think I, I would just add that a GZA also did send two uh, CVs, and I think that one person was a PE in Rhode Island and the other is a PE in Massachusetts, if I recall correctly. And, G, and Hatch has, as we know, one PE who's not registered in Massachusetts and one who is registered in Massachusetts. I would just add that. I guess. Yeah. So what I liked about the uh, GZA, not only did I think it was a lower price, it seems to hit all on the first shot. He tried to he hit all the points that we wanted them to make, and and uh, scope of work number two, he did say that he will provide an opinion, and so that was something I've been looking for. Uh, so I thought this was. Uh, this was lower and it seemed to be at least complete. And, uh, and I would add they could, G, uh, GZA seems to be able to get the work done in half the time that Hatch could. So I think that would, that's in, in everyone's interest as well. Any other comments from commissioners on these two uh, proposals? I would just add that uh... What Nathaniel just said is important because we have so much material generated already by various parties. Uh, I can't imagine uh, needing an extended period to go through them all. Anyone else? Okay. So this is the commission's decision. I don't know if we need any comments from the applicant. Is there any comments from the applicant? Might as well ask. Seeing none. May, oh, yeah. Sure. Sorry. Thank you. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I I I, I did see in the GZA proposal, um, as Nathaniel referenced and has been discussed, that part of their fee includes review of third party. And quite frankly, I've never been in had that happen where a peer reviewer where the applicant is expected to pay is reviewing opponents paperwork I, I think it would be appropriate for the commission if they want that to pay for that piece of it out of their pocket but it seems to me that the point of peer review is to be reviewing the applicant's materials and not those of people opposing the project any comments from the commission Any motions from the commission? I guess, yeah, I'm just thinking, uh, responding to Stephanie's comment, um, I guess the nature, I'm thinking back to actually, actually uh, Stephanie's suggestion in the first place to, to for the commission to get a peer reviewer because we had been hearing, you know, from the applicant, from from the applicant's engineer and the uh, one opponent's engineer, and she suggested the peer reviewer would be helpful uh, to do that. I guess maybe I sort of see your point. So maybe we can just say the person should consider it. I don't think they need to peer review. Uh, I, I don't think I was expecting the peer the GZA for instance, to actually peer review and tell us if Scott was right or not. But I think that they could certainly review that material as they are reviewing, getting up to speed on that. But I think I, I see your point in terms of the focus of the report should be on the applicants, you know, what the applicant is presenting to the commission. But I don't think, in other words, I don't think they should be forced to ignore what the other experts have, have provided to the commission, if that nuance makes sense. I would also just remind um, everyone that the opponents have not had a 
an engineer provide anything, which is required under the Wetlands Protection Act. So again, I don't want, my, my fear is that one is crediting the opponents to a project that haven't provided, like, that have not submitted anything from a professional engineer as if it was a professional engineer. Um, and, and you're right, Nathaniel, my suggestion definitely was that um, that we have additional peer review on those two limited points, standards two and three. And, and that was based on the fact that there had been questions raised about the appropriateness of our submittals. And so we we stand by those submittals and we're, and we're happy for a peer review of those. Um, Right, and I guess that's what I'm saying is I think that's what I'd expect GZA to 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 come back with, and but but not come back with them commenting on is Scott Horsley right or not. But I think that the GZA should be able to, in terms of getting up to speed, if they want to read Scott's uh, submittal, that's fine. But I just I, yeah, I I agree with you. I don't expect them, and I don't think it would be appropriate for them to say, you know, comment on. You know, provide comments on what Scott said if they want to, you know, reference it in passing, that's fine, but it's not not judging between the two, so to speak. It's looking at the applicant's submittals. Uh, and if they want to, you know, take into consideration what Scott said, that's fine or or not. But I, I think that was sort of what we were saying is just, you know, they could get up to speed and review what's been submitted by the applicant and others, but to respond directly respond and really focus on the applicants submittal to see if they as you say to see if they've met this the, the stormwater standards two and three so I, I'm, I'm comfortable to give that direction to gsa just so they're not confused and they don't come back with a report on the app what the applicant said and then a report on what scott horsley said and an applicant on what the um the other guy said as well so so, so i guess my follow-up to that would, would simply be to ask then that um if if the commission is to vote GZA that they they make that point clear to the whoever the selected peer reviewer is just so there's no um confusion on their behalf sure yeah sorry that's what I was trying to say uh, that's mm -hmm. what I was trying to propose Stephanie so thanks yes we make that clear to them okay that's great uh so I think we need a motion at this point and I'm hoping that Nathaniel can put that into words or Somehow. Sure, I'll make a motion to select uh, the GZA proposal of June 5th, 2024 to the commission with the instructions to GZA just affirming that they will be focusing on and re reporting back to the commission only on the applicants uh, submittals. You know, they're free to read any other submittal that's in the record on this so far, but we don't want them and expect them to address any other uh, any other uh, technical submittals in their in their response or in their memo to the commission report to the commission can i get a second i'll second dave kaplan thanks dave thanks uh dave kaplan second mike gildas game yes so it's going to be nathaniel stevens yes david kaplan Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay. So everyone knows. Well, we'll just go through it. So we're going to need a check. It's notoriously slow in Reading. I'm so sorry, in Reading. It's notoriously slow here in Arlington once we receive the check, but we'll do our best. We know that going into it. But if we can get a check for the amount of this review quickly, that would help. And David Morgan, you know, obviously we've been slowed down by the process before, so hopefully you can be on top of it as soon as we uh, the check comes in. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, now I'd like uh, the applicant to agree to continue to our next meeting, which I believe is the 20th, June 20th, and then we'll just make that motion too. We can agree to that. Sure. Can I get a motion to continue to June twentieth? So moved. I'm sorry, David's got it. I'll second. Second. Okay. Mike Gildas. Mike Gildas game. Yes. Uh, David Kaplan. Yes. 
Nathaniel Stevens? Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, we're going to open up the Hamilton, 18 Hamilton Road. I'm back. Did I miss one? Oh, David White has come back. Uh, He's part of this meeting. Okay, so um, who said 42? I don't know. Uh, I did. I said 742. That's when David came back. 742. Great. 742. Okay, moving on. Uh, notice of intent for 18 Hamilton Road, uh, DEP file number 910358. Opening the hearing tonight for 18 Hamilton Road. Um, the team from Allen and Major are here. Could you introduce yourself for the record and introduce your team and bring the commission up to date on your project? Hi, I'm Jackie Trainer. I'm a professional landscape architect and um, the project is to um, restore eroded um, bank along Spy Pond. Um, do I have apps? Do I have ability to share? Yes. Yes, or shortly you will. Oh. Okay. Um, so um, the pro the the bank along this whole area around eighteen, and then the the other building up on the other side was restored back in the 1990s and this there's one spot that just hasn't that that didn't work from that work that bleh, has eroded since then so we're just trying to um, bring back the 30 lineal feet of bank to go out to the end of the um existing drainage pipe that was put in back in the 1990s and to um, restore it with the um, erosion controls and riprap and, and such what that was done prior. Do you wanna uh, show us a plan and go through the work and the work and the location? We should be able to share a screen, there we go. Do you have it now? Yep. Okay, all right, so, um, this is Spy Pond, the bottom right corner of Spy Pond. This is 18 Hamilton Road. And then rotating it, this is the property. This is 18 Hamilton. And this is the 30 lineal feet of um, bank that um, is wanting to be um, restored. And um, so we've got some, some erosion control fabric. We've got planting on top of that. Uh, we've got erosion control uh to to bur yeah, i'm not even gonna try to say that curtain and um and then the uh details oops there they are so there's the curtain that's in and then we're gonna have a silt sock as well but then this is the um detail to put some riprap to hold the the bank with the water elevation and then the plants on top and then this is at the pipe oh that was a um there were there there were clay pipes that were installed for muskrats that were done. So if there is a clay pipe that is within that area, it's to be replaced at the end. So um, that is it. And then this is the the planting details. Sure. Uh, any questions from commission members? David Kaplan. Yeah, um, I noticed on the detail that you have specified a synthetic erosion control mat. Can you talk to me about um, where there are no natural materials available or is there any utility for that over a jute or some other? Um, um, I think that uh, the synthetic was a little bit more strong that would hold up the, um, the slope. I think a, a jute wouldn't last as long. I can always look into it some more, but it, the um, I don't. This this is just the um, turbidity curtain. 
silt sock. That's um, natural. Where am I saying it's synthetic? Uh, uh, in the narrative, in page nine. Oh, oh, okay. So, um, I, you know, I'm willing to change it. I, I, you know, it was just something that's more durable. Yeah, I guess that would be my pref preference. I mean, I've, we've we've had a lot of uh, slope restoration and work in that area, and I'm not. I don't believe I I recall any of them using a synthetic uh, material. Um, I guess my preference would be if we could get a result in stabilization um, with a natural fiber. Um, that would be my preference. Okay, I am writing a note: natural fiber matting. Got it. Thank you. And also, I I forgot to mention that we um, there's a, a priority habitat, which is a plant species. And so before we do any of the work, we're going to have that um, located and um, avoid them if if possible, and do do what they require in the um, the Mesa filing. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mike Gill, this game. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, I was I had a question or two about those clay pipes. Uh, I'm totally unfamiliar with muskrat uh, nesting or denning habitat, but um, is, was the erosion that occurred have anything to do with the fact that these pipes were inserted into the bank um, and was, uh, served as a place where water would accumulate? Um, and I'm just wondering if uh, it says they will be replaced. I think uh, I don't know what the timing would be or how it would uh, uh, co coordinate with uh, denning or nesting activities of these uh, animals. Um, I, I guess we could f research that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I, it was only due to the fact that they were installed back in the 90s. So if we came across one and needed to replace it, that's what it's it's listed there for. And um, it in any way contributing to the erosion occurring in the I, No, I don't think it is. I, I tend to think it's it's the actual, I believe it's a, a foundation drain that comes out from the, the building here and goes straight out. Oh, so it's a stormwater discharge. It's, it's a drain. It's a drain, yeah. yeah. Drain. Hmm. Well, I think both are indicated on the plan there. There's a clay pipe to the left of the existing PVC pipe. PVC pipe's kind of dead center and then clay pipe to the left. Yeah, I okay. think on the plan, that's what it shows. But I think I've been out there a couple of times and it is a little confusing where the clay pipes are. And the only thing you really see is that uh, white PVC pipe. I was going to suggest um, a site visit also with the commission and the applicant so we can look this over. But that would answer the questions, uh, you know, about the pipes and where they are, at least if people were into uh, thinking of attending that site visit. Anyways, Mike, I didn't want to cut you off. Please continue. No, I just wondered if Fish and Game is a, has any role here about those muskrats. Yeah, well, mu muskrats are going to den in the bank. And I thought it was odd that someone would find a, a pipe, but maybe they were trying to, uh, you know, focus in on where the problem is going to be rather than allow it to happen throughout the bank. Uh, or maybe it's a remnant from a previous uh, patch that stayed and everything else eroded. I think Who knows? Like drainage pipes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, David, do you, uh, you have questions now? Is that? Here? Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just curious. I mean, if we thought the erosion was originally caused by the uh, foundation drain and that source is still there, I mean, what, I guess, what's the, how, how do we think this restoration is going to be successful if the, the cause of it is still in place? Mm hmm. We're going to um, reinforce it with some more riprap around the pipe and have a larger rock placed in that area. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you.
David Morgan. So we've discussed previously, we being Yap and I am in the. David, you have to be channel. really careful because you're those new speakers and microphone is not mumbling okay. a lot. Yeah, got to be close. All right. So we discussed over the course of this project the conflict between, well, within our regulations, between the area subject to flooding and the bank restoration. And this area is within the floodplain. So we're filling in the floodplain with a restoration project. The question is, how do we reconcile the bank restoration concern with the displacement of flooding? And I don't know if Jackie, you want to speak to that at all, or if we should leave it to the commission to decide how to sort of cope with that uh, catch-22. But I, I just needed to raise it because it's a sort of regulatory oddity. I, I would think that it would be di very difficult to replace the same elevation that we're trying to, you know, restore. Do we have a quantity, uh, a calculation about how much flood storage is being filled? About 45 cubic feet. Yeah. Um, we can review our regs to see if there's a, I can't remember, do we have a sort of ecological restoration component to this that might be able to get around that standard? I'd have to look at the regs again. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I'm, in, I'm inclined to see, see this as a restoration of a, a pre-existing condition and, you know, erosion and something that's damaging a resource, um, I, have a t I have a hard time considering that flood storage. Right. Yeah, so. Makes sense to me. Yeah, I had a question, Jackie. I was wondering um, that detail that you put up there that showed what the um, bank would look like. I know that you want to use the stone because that's probably as, you know, pretty hard surface, pretty armored there. Was there any thought of using uh, that core fascine log in that area and then building up uh, from there? The, the core, core fascine? Yeah, the core logs. Do you know what those are? The co coconut the husk logs. Yeah. But at the bottom there, you have stone um the core logs are are meant to um erode or you know to dissipate i mean they're, they're not meant to stay so so this rock will be more permanent and would be would withhold the wave action and the freeze thaw yes yeah, i understand it. it it's supposed to grow into the bank and become permanent part of the bank and that erosion you know, becomes a bank and you're supposed to plant it and you're going to, at the end of the day, you'll have a vegetated slope and you don't have any, you know, like you, you introduce rocks, you're going to get some heating effects in that area. I know that it will stop the scouring, but so will the core log. Um, so I was wondering about that, but I was also wondering which I couldn't figure out because, like I said, I went down there and I provided David with a picture, but that PVC pipe looks like it sticks out more than two feet. And you're saying you want to, you said you wanted to um, replace or repair the slope to the end of the pipe. Yeah. I, but it I also says 18 inches somewhere. So I was yeah. wondering if it was the end of the pipe or 18 inches. 
Um, I estimated the end of the pipe to be 18 inches. I guess um, I never really measured it, so. Okay. So it would be safe to say that whatever you're adding to the existing bank is just to create this armoring effect that you want to do, or are you going further than that? Some areas will be further out than 18 inches. No. Okay. That's, that's helpful. Uh, Nathaniel Stevens has his hand up. Thanks, Chuck. Um, I was just going to say, I, my recollection is that when there was a restoration of the bank, I think it's further north or it could be further south, that's what I can't remember, north. Um, at, the, at the condos, um, SWCA and Mickey Marcus had a plan. And they used the choir fascine logs that, that um, Chuck was mentioning as a strategy. So I was just wondering if, how those had held up. My recollection is that they had many of them sort of piled in layers and they were planted uh, to provide that stability. So they just weren't fascine logs by themselves and eroding. But the idea was, to, I think, to plant and do that. So uh, yeah. that might be something to consider as an alternative to the rock. Um, mm -hmm. or just wondering why it wasn't considered. Uh, considered. Uh, I'd imagine it's probably a little more expensive, but other than that. Well, exactly. I've used the same design that was done in the same area back in the 90s. So they used no, this this wasn't. I think there was there was several projects, right? There's one in this in the, in the 90s, then there's one in I would say the 2010s, maybe. I'm okay. sorry, between 2000 and yeah, 2010. I'm trying to remember which Mickey Marcus did. Uh, I yeah, that one was permitted. I and that's why I can't remember which stretch it is. I almost want to say it was the northern portion of the condos, the, the northern two build in front of the northern two buildings, because I do okay. remember there being. I think that's right. Yes. Okay, um, so it might be worth looking at that shoreline to see how that's done. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we God forbid we may even have those plans still kicking around someplace um, electronically. So I would just maybe suggest that instead of the rock idea. That All right, I, I would I, please. Um, I request those plans. Thank you very much. Yeah, if we if we have them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I'm supportive of David's uh, suggestion of. Not doing a synthetic. If I haven't said that already. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, David Kaplan has his hand up. Yeah. Um. And maybe um misremembering, but I thought that some of the coir um slope that was planted um maybe with hatches shoreline restoration work that there was trouble getting plants to establish for whatever reason. And that, and again, with the core logs being ephemeral, if they don't have plants within them and stabilizing the shore, there is no long-term stabilization. So, I mean, I guess I'm not necessarily opposed to the, the uh, with 30 linear feet, you know, it's not a huge area. I'm not opposed to, the proposal um, or the, the restoration as proposed, but um, I, I, I wouldn't, I'd be hesitant to steer them in the direction of using query logs if there have been some challenges with it um, nearby. Up but, at spot, but, up at spot, yeah. Park. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good point. I, I these that. things are, are used a lot. Uh, I mean, I'm familiar with them in my, my town and, and, They've been planted with willow stakes and they're doing fine. So I'm, they weren't, they weren't, um, you know, embedded with seed. You just uh, planted the stakes once they were, you know, tied in place. It, I can't see how it wouldn't work. Uh, from from what I know uh, about these, they seem to have that ability. Um, as a matter of fact, our uh, project. Millet Psalms and Morgan uses, I think, about 500 feet of core logs, and they're all supposed to be plant, uh, turn into the bank in the future. So it was a uh, Horsley Witten design. Anyways, um, I would suggest, since we have an example out there, to look at that. When I was there, it did look uh, from this location, if I look towards, um, I guess, the Spy Pond. Uh, rotary area in the ball field that 
there was a lot of vegetation along the bank. And uh, maybe, I, you know, I didn't get down and look at that exact spot and see if um, there, it's coming out of the core logs, but certainly there was a lot of vegetation over there. And, uh, you know, the other thing I would say is that you have a chance of, of something growing as long as it's not uh, a stone. This is Arian Post. Can I make a comment? Uh, are you with the applicant or? Yes, well, I know I'm you're with not... the applicant. I'm actually a Sure. Please make owner. a comment. Introduce yourself to the uh, for the record. Okay. Uh, my name is Arian Post. I actually am a member of the Board of Trustees and also an owner who has uh, witnessed the entire stretch of the shoreline. Um, evolving over the last 39 years. So I just wanted to clarify only one thing is that I think the erosion was precipitated by the uh, falling down of a willow tree many years ago. And that seems to have accelerated the erosion process because I don't uh, remember any other issues with the uh, plant plants on the on the shoreline anywhere else on our property. That's all I wanted to say. Oh, thank you. Okay. Any other questions from the commission? I'm going to turn this over to... Mike, uh, Mike has his hand oh, up. Sorry, Mike. Go for it. I don't know if I'm remembering correctly, but is it this project that has a dredging component? This is the one. They wanted yeah. to dredge it out to put the stone in place. Right. And I'm just wondering about the impact of that and what happens to the spoils. It'll be brought right back up into the shore. They're not taking it out and removing it. So be shore augmentation in a sense? Yes. And then that though that would be planted uh with grasses or shrubs or with yeah, native plant materials, shrubs and perennials. Got it. That's after the dredging, right? Yes. Thank you. So that's the application for those stones. Would the same application be needed if it was the core log? Or is that something you need to look into? I'd have to look into that. Why? Are you dredging just to uh, embed the stone so it doesn't move and it's stable? Or is there, uh, you know, obviously maybe that area has all the material and you wanted to clean it up? I would say just to, to remove the silt that's there to create a stable foundation to put the rock on. Okay. All right. So we certainly had a couple questions right now. Is there any other questions from the uh, from the commission? If not, I'm going to turn this over to anyone attending tonight who would like to speak about uh, 18 Hamilton Road. Could, uh, could you take down the plan? Mm -hmm. So I can see everyone. Um, again, you can use the uh, reactions button, hit the raise hand function, or you can just turn your uh, video on and, and wave and we'll, we'll get to you. Okay, seeing none, back to the commission. We had a couple asks on this project. Uh, is, uh, do we feel satisfied or would you like to have an opportunity to see the site? and see the revised plan that swaps out the synthetic with jute and some more investigation on the clay pipe and then the core log also. Not seeing anyone say anything, but I think that's the way we're heading. So I think we'd like to uh, get a motion or ask the applicant, we'd like to uh, continue to uh, June 20th and if you think that's enough time to pull that information together, otherwise it's up to you what, uh, what's the next meeting that you'd like to attend. Uh, June 20th would be just fine. Great, uh, can I get a motion from the commission? 
So moved. You have a second? Second. Mike filled this game. All right, David White. David, you're you're muted, David. I'm muted. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, David Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. Mike kill this game. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. All right. So, if uh, if you need uh, you know any more information about what we requested, reach out to David Morgan uh, either tomorrow or next week. Now, otherwise, we'll see you on the twentieth. Thank okay, you. no and no site visit. It doesn't seem like anyone wanted a site visit. Yeah. I think that uh I was gonna say if someone can take a picture of that, there might be one in the application, but a current picture that might be helpful. Sure. If anyone gets down there, can we get a picture? I'll definitely go down there. Uh, I already have some pictures. I think David Morgan has them, but um if you could send those around, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll do some more. Okay. All right. Thank right, you. Thank you. Yep. Let's see. This is our last uh, hearing tonight. It's a notice of intent for the Medford Boat Club. Uh, DEV file number. Did a DEV file number come in for this or is still no file number? Seeing none. Okay. So there's an open order of conditions for the Medford Boat Club. It's file number 910296. The order of conditions had a list of requirements that were not completed. Um, we can't talk about a new notice of intent without discussing the old order of conditions and what was required for the order of conditions. The commission would like to have the old order of conditions, 9109-0296, uh, closed out before we issue the new order of conditions for this property. And for any property, that's, that's the commission's policy. Um, I know that David Morgan has emailed the applicant and um, could you introduce yourself uh, for the record and your team and bring the commission up to date with these, with any information you have on that uh, old order of conditions and the list that we got from Fish and Game. Uh, Keith Gazelle um, with Solar Tube Lake Management uh, representing the applicant. Um, so I guess this is the, unfortunately, the first I'm hearing of, um, you know, some conditions that weren't complied with or fulfilled uh, in the formal order of conditions. And so, um, I mean, I think we can certainly do that, but I guess I'm uncertain as to what um, you're needing at this point. What they are, sure. So that's a great segue into what I asked David Morgan to do. Our vice chair is not here tonight, Susan. Uh, and she made a list and I asked David in her stead to read that list off. David, is that available? Okay. How's my volume level now? Is that a bit better? I changed some settings. Not much better. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep yelling. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to share my screen and uh, pull up this email from Susan so we can look at it together in her words. Let's see, how do I pop this out? There we go. Share screen. So with regard to, which I've never used this view before, so forgive me for kind of bumbling through this. The I, I guess there, there was a section missing from the um, NOI as submitted Appendix A. Um, needs to be filed with the rest of the NOI materials. The certificate of compliance, um, Chuck blew to already, um, the conditions are not listed here, but we can go into those in more depth. 
Susan also noted that um, the five year proposal to which she had some objections. Um, Chuck, do you want me to go on with this or do you want sure. to? Yeah, hold on. So, uh, so Susan, so in, in one, she's saying the original order of conditions, uh, it was an ecological restoration NOI, and it wasn't completely filled out. So there's a question with that. They're supposed to be completely filled out. Um, I'm just leaving that out there. There's uh, the for a request for a certificate of compliance, uh, seven special conditions must be met. Number three, uh, the proposed notice of intent is for five years, and she's recommending that we don't do that. And we, um, we uh, agree with uh, the Department of Fisheries and say just two years duration. And then she proposes a notice of, an, uh, so the proposed NOI lists six different types of herbicides for their approval. And this is inconsistent with what we have approved before. So we wanted to look into those and probably be more um, surgical with what we uh, you know, approve. And then uh, the monitoring in section uh, five, three is not sufficient. At a minimum, I recommend that uh, requiring monitoring special conditions for that old permit, which includes timing and frequency, monitoring for the DO sketchy depths and visual observations of the herring. Uh, number six, uh, she wants a new, um, the new notice of intent is uh, considered at a minimum the same special conditions. So she would like these same special conditions with this new notice of intents with the additions of a condition listing the approved herbicides and to no other herb and no other herbicides could be used other than the ones that are approved. And then number seven on her list is maybe a site visit should be done. This area is close to the herring ladder. I think maybe I am, she thinks maybe so, or maybe she's mistaken. And then the, her last comment is that she would like the Water Bodies Working Group to give their opinion on the notice of intent um, and uh, consistency with other aquatic management that they have permitted recently. So those are all Susan's suggestions. Okay. And I would ask you if you got, so you have no, Keith, you have no, um, recollection of that letter from fisheries that had had the list or you didn't have you reviewed our old order of conditions because we incorporated that same list uh, into our order of conditions yeah so i'm familiar with that i mean i guess i was unfamiliar i didn't know had david sent those comments to us prior to the hearing tonight uh, and I, mm -hmm. okay uh, and unfortunately, I hadn't seen them. And so I guess I'm unprepared to address them at this point, but probably does make sense for us to respond in writing to those. Um, I, it sounds as though most of them are amenable to us, um, but would certainly, we can retract, I think, some of the herbicides, uh, if that is the wish of the commission and to provide you with two or th three that, um, you know, I think are probably the most uh, necessary for the plant assemblage that we would be dealing with. So um, I, I guess at this point is if it's appropriate, um, you know, I guess we would request a continuance for uh, the next meeting so that we could respond to the comments raised. Sure, but be, uh, before we do that, let's just see if the commission, maybe maybe before we continue, you want to at least hear what, what the commission's thinking about. Sure. Uh, so that could be incorporated in your thought process with how you're going to return and, and talk to the commission. Nathaniel Stevens, I see that you have your hand up. Thanks. Yeah, I, I share Susan's comments. Um, two things. I think at one point, I, th I thought we were going to go over the items that were missing that we had not received from the prior order of conditions, because my recollection is there was some testing that was supposed to be done. And I would like those test results as further information to ascertain what the impacts might be on this project. So those are important to me to see before I could approve this project. Um, and secondly, it was not clear to me and maybe I just missed it in the application, where, where exactly this, the herbicide application would be. I think it described an area, but it wasn't, I need a plan description okay. showing, a graphic showing exactly where, all I could see is where the, 
all I could see was many plans showing where the boat club is, but <laughs> not exactly where the, the herbicides will be uh, applied. So those are my uh, comments. Thanks. Thank you. So David, while we're going through the rest of the commissions, can you um, look through the order of conditions and find the list that Nathaniel was speaking about? I know that there's several on the uh, fisheries uh, letter from, uh, where's the date? From June 20th, 2018. I could read those off, but I thought maybe they were to read the ones from the order of conditions. You could look into that while we're speaking about this. Mike Gildas game. Yeah, I think it was uh, in the comments from Fish and Game, but they were talking about uh, sort of a broader picture of a watershed plan or a lake plan management plan for the vegetation and so forth. And I'm just, I would like to sort of emphasize that because I think that's an important way to address this uh, comprehensively and in a longer term. Uh, rather than just focusing on getting rid of the plants. Um, so I would like to add, make sure that is considered as we move forward. Yep. Yeah, so the, so the comprehensive plan, and then it says avoid herbicides applications from April 1st to June 30th. And then DMF recommends uh, monitoring biweekly before, you know, this, you know, for soft oxygen, a whole list of things they want mm -hmm. to monitor. Um, and then they're recommending two years and then they call and it's Tay Evans and Tay, yeah, Tay Evans is well known for her work. Um, so I do want the commission to know if anyone read further than this, that Solitude did answer every one of these. Uh, if you go on to see what their answer was. Well, basically, it was just saying things like, well, there's no association. And for these reasons, we'd like to have more year. So anyways, there's there's a lot to read for the commission, for the applicant uh, on those. David Kaplan. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we before we, I, I just wanted to get the order of operations straight so it, it sounds like did i hear correctly that there's an open order and they haven't request yet requested a certificate of compliance that's true so we we can't procedurally i guess we can't consider a new notice of intent until that one's closed out is that how that works so yeah so <laughs> you know I, th this is a policy and and before when we when we put this policy out to people, it didn't seem like there was any harm. I was thinking of what harm would come if that was the case here. Now we would lose the season and there's a boat club, there's a business, all that. But if you look deeper into this and I'm not, this is not my thoughts on Nathaniel, if you wanna speak, it's fine with me, but this information that was asked for by fisheries and was in the notice of intent will help us design what chemicals and what herbicides that, that we can approve and what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. So to have that information, it, it, and I think that's what fisheries is trying to do, it would give us at least some sort of background to move forward. And so that's, that's the reason why I think it's needed before we even look at this new notice of intent. I don't, uh, Nathaniel, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, not at this point. No, that was my point is that some of the, one of the conditions in that would have provided and that prior order of conditions would have is hopefully will provide us with some data, some information to evaluate this project. But generally, yes, we like to have an applicant close out an existing order of conditions well, existing expired order of conditions for, before we before we approve another order of conditions. But yeah, oh, thank you for that. And I think you know to you know Keith, I'd ask. It's late in the season. Usually, these notices of intent come in early, early beginning of the year. Is there a rush on this? Are you setting up for next year? I mean, I think we're certainly wanting to give the commission the information that they want. So I think that's the precedent for us. Um, so 
I think the timing with related to implementation of any management is is important, but secondary in this case. Okay. All right. Any other comments yeah, from Chuck, the committee? Yeah, sorry, Chuck, you were just referring to a letter, which I'm not seeing from Fish and Wildlife on this project. Is yeah, it you have to go to the uh, Google Drive. I didn't see it either. So you got to go to the Google Drive and it's there. Oh, so it's maybe not David. It's on the public facing website. It's, it says 2018 order of conditions. It's on, yeah, it's on the. Oh, sorry. Okay. So it's related to the 2000. It's not one that we've received. No. Okay. We haven't received comments from fishing game on this um, application yet. Okay. Yes. But, you know, we went through this with, we went through this exact same thing with the spy pond. They said, get us that information. That's, right. that was their answer. So, okay. So I, I might expect something very similar. Got it. Thanks. You want to walk through the conditions that were in the letter that nothing was just a sort of DNF letter. And or I, think if we, I think if we send it to them, that's enough. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Was there any different ones in the order? Did you have the order ones? Underlined. Yeah, and I just scrolled up away from them, but there they are again. They're more or less aligned with the uh, DMF recommendations, with the exception probably of number three, saying that in order to renew the permit, must sure they've taken steps towards creating a collaborative group. Yeah. Um, it's pretty, yeah. Fancy Could you? Uh... Oh, sorry, could you please post those when you have an opportunity? Yeah, these are these are on the drive. For They're time. on the Google Drive under Order of Conditions 2018 for um, the Bill Club. Yeah, they're just but not. They, they didn't make it to the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and so no treatment uh, between April 1 and June 30. So just... The window is the end of the month, basically. The no treatment window is until the end of this month. It looks like number two is the one of the ones that's not on the DMF letter. Okay. Yes. And Maybe then monitoring program, that. including switching out. And then number five is also not on that letter. Yep, submitting reports. And that's it. So two and five are the only difference between the DNF letter. Okay. And David Morgan, you sent a copy of this order of conditions to Keith along with the 2018 Natural Heritage Letter or DNF uh, letter. I sent it to I believe the name was Kate who was filing yeah. the application. Um, okay. yeah, I, we've been in conversation about the conditions that are in the old order and that they relate to the DNF recommendations and so forth. Okay, so Solitude has them, I guess, even if it didn't go to Keith. That's my recollection, but I will send again to Keith and Kate. So okay, thanks. I guess the question is, do we want a site visit? I'm almost tempted to wait to get, get the next set of information and then do a site visit, but I also don't want to hold it up. Yeah, we're getting into um, the next meeting is the 20th, and then we're into the 4th of July. So, or the 11th. Yeah. Think, of, think of that. So, we could make a, after the 20th, we'd have a few days to make a site visit, or we could set one up before that meeting. Uh, once we get the information, it may take longer than. June twentieth to accumulate all this information. I'm I'm not sure. We may wait to hear if that's going to happen or not. And then set up a site visit. David Morgan could send out a Google a doodle poll. Right. I guess it sounds like the applicant would like to continue, and it's just a matter of to which meeting the uh, 
June 20th or July 11th? I'm look sorry to interrupt. I'm just I'm looking through the project file on our uh, drive, and it appears as though there are reports containing that information. I, for some reason, it appears it probably just weren't sent to the commission. But it looks like there is a report for each uh, of the years of the order um, containing the Temptio SEPI disk information. Uh, yeah. So good. I'll Great. Yeah. Get that to you quickly. Great. So it looks like we're we'll be in good shape for the twentieth. Yes. I'll make okay. Motion, motion yep. to continue to the twentieth with the applicant's permission. Yes. Agreed. Thank you. And a second. I'll second. David White. Mike Gillis game. Yes. Uh, David Kaplan. Yes. Nathaniel Stevens. Yes. David White. Yes. And Chuck Taroni says yes. Okay, Keith. Okay. Thank you. And uh, if you could send that information along to David Morgan, that would be great. We will do that. Yeah. Thank and you. David and David, you you want to send the uh, 2018 order of conditions and the letter from DMF to uh, to Keith. Great. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your time. All right, so it looks like we're finished with our agenda tonight. I just want to ask if there's anyone here that'd like to uh, say something that's the commission that hasn't had a chance to speak tonight. Just uh, use the raise hand function, uh, reaction buttons, and hit the raise hand functions. I see Michael. Phone, please. Uh, oh, a clapping. Is that the same? I don't know. Do you want to uh, unmute yourself? And uh... I think I did. But okay, you... yep, yep, we hear you. Um, so I'm, uh, before you no, start, but, can you just, uh, Oh, sorry. Yeah. For the, I'm on Robin, of... I'm on mm -hmm. Robin Hood road and our whole neighborhood swims in these lakes. We're not with the boat club, uh, but the boat club is our neighbor. Um, and there's about a 30 some houses here. So we all really participate. So I'm sorry. I just got notification like last night about this. And I'm not very educated on this, but my questions would be, how does this impact wildlife? Like we have a bald eagle in our neighborhood. Um, well, two bald eagles. And then I wondered if there's other options that are effective. I don't know about controlling invasives. I know it's important, um, but I know there's also the law of unintended consequences that we don't always foresee. I looked quickly at Diquat, that chemical, and it's banned in many countries. It talks about its toxicity, its neurotoxic effects, that it binds to the soil and doesn't degrade. This is just a quick Google search. So I wondered, what people think about that in terms of all these chemicals. Um, we have a lot of kids in the neighborhood, as you probably hey, know. Chuck, sorry. Yeah. So the I, boat sorry, just a point of order. Um, I'm sorry, it looks like the applicants left and we've closed the hearing on this particular I didn't matter. Know. I just think it's not fair to the applicant to not be here and okay. hear your good comments. Okay. So, so I'm sorry, yeah. And Chuck, maybe we forgot to take public comment. Yeah, I, I was I can't never remember. Asked, so. so, so if you could come on the twentieth yeah. of June and relay all these things, we okay. will hear from the applicant and then have an opportunity for the public, like you, neighbors, to speak. Okay, and so, is there yes. information from the Fish and Wildlife that you put on the screen that I could review? Yes, you can. Uh, if you go to the town website and okay. um, well, if you go to the town website, I'll just and then go to the calendar on the front page and hit tonight's date. You'll okay. find a conservation meeting and inside that agenda, there's live links. There's that, or you can go to the conservation page also and you'll find this address up there. Um, and then there's that resource with David Morgan and he put his uh, information, contact information in the chat, which I just think is his email address. 
but all those things will work and uh, we can make sure that you get the information re in regards to this application. But okay. Nathaniel's right. I was really asking for something that we didn't anticipate that someone wants to bring up for tonight's meeting, which we wouldn't be able to discuss, but we could decide whether or not it should go on a future agenda. Okay, so typically you ask for public comments during the process, but tonight wasn't. Well, we that closed it happen. by mistake, yeah. Okay, yeah. got it, thank you. Yeah, okay, that was Michelle Nathan, just for the record. Okay, um, any, other, any other comments? Uh, from anyone attending tonight's meeting? Seeing none. Oh, motion oh man. All right. Uh, so yeah, so let's just do what we've been doing. Just everybody make a motion and I'm good with that. Just everybody. Okay. Unanimous. Long. We'll see it's you on the 20th. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.